Classic run them bands. Ready? All right. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Dwight Cliff Jr. here. Dwight Cliff Sr. And we are Cliff and Cliff. So we got another great episode for you today. Excited for yes, this yes, week. Yes. You know, it's been a fun week here. And so um, I love doing this here. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. All right. Giving information. Enjoying life. Yeah. That's what we do. Absolutely. Ready on your bike ride. I know you're about to get on out of here and oh, get on yeah. that bike. Three o'clock, riding 20 miles. 20 miles? 20 miles a day. You got your body ready? It's ready to gonna get. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right. So, one of the most recent topics here, man, I don't know, it's kind of been in the news. I don't read the news much. I try to stay away from the news, man. Yeah, right. But, uh, Simone Biles. Oh, yeah, yeah, the gymnast. Yeah, the gymnast, Olympic, okay. Olympic uh, star. Oh, yeah, she is. Um, and so I think she's this week she decided not to um, she didn't want to compete or she couldn't compete I've seen that I've seen that yeah. um, and I as I read the story it looked like stress management or uh, mental health issues mm -hmm. you know that she could be dealing with personally right and uh, same thing with uh, Naomi Osaka as well I think okay. she kind of backed out from uh, the Olympics you know oh I didn't hear about her yet yeah the, uh, yeah. the um, tennis star Oh, okay, 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 yeah. okay. I think I remember something like that. Okay. And it just so happens that they're, you know, both women of color. You mm, know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so some people feel like they're catching some extra flack. You know what I mean? For or not even I was not even the thing of color and really in a situation. They just some people just and it could be color. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, I mean, people just upset with them for making a personal choice of not competing. You know what I'm saying? Right. You don't see it a lot. Yeah, you don't see a lot of. Um, uh, at least you don't really you don't hear about it as much as black people stressing out about mental health and, and pressure from from sports. Yeah, because we normally push through just it. push through it and yeah. don't and don't let it um, bother. I remember not to go back too far, but I remember um, the player that played for the Lakers. Um, the brother that played, he he got he was um he got stressed out and had to go into the hospital for a while. Ron Artest? Uh, not Ron. Um, uh, he was he was married to um to one of the um, Fox to um to the uh, Kardashians. Oh, I don't know who that is. Big guy. Um, I don't know. Oh, Lamar Odom. No, Lamar Odom. Yeah, yeah. He got he got man, he had, he got he got caught up and got stressed out and ended up. Talking about being in a, in a, 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 a uh, this um, uh, girl house, but he, you know he's in there locked up in there for days and wouldn't come out and yeah. <laughs> stuff I, like that. So mental mental yeah. stress and mental or, or, or can be can be rough on a person. Absolutely, you know. And you don't see really athletes putting themselves first. You know what I'm saying? It's no. like oh. You here for the public, in yeah. which to some of that is true, mm -hmm. but hell, hey, if I'm not feeling up for it, you're not feeling up for it, man. And you gotta be okay with that. Yeah, you gotta be okay with letting yourself deal with the stress that you got going on in the best way you know how. Because you guess what, you want to survive, you want to yeah. live your life to be old and happy, like some like other people do. Yeah. But um, Simone, get back to Simone. I mean, I mean, I, I seen her in her in um. It might have been that when they do go all the preliminaries and she was missing her landings. She had landed off the mat to the right, to the left, and 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 taking big hops back another step on her landings. Mm -hmm. I knew this little girl was off. Yeah, young and I was woman. watching that. This young woman. Young woman. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Uh, I knew she was off. Um, when I seen her doing that, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I said, "Dag, is she gonna be able to compete and, yeah. and and be okay?" Yeah, because you don't you don't normally see that from her. So I'm not surprised to see her drop out because she was, uh, in my opinion, was not together. Yeah, and 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 that's perfectly fine. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. that's perfectly fine. And I think you have to be okay again, like we talked about the last episode, is being okay with the booze. Yeah, because it's like ain't nobody gonna take care of you but you. No. When you go home at night, ain't no fans coming home with you. You got to live with yourself. You mm -hmm. got to live with your spouse, your family. So if you're not able to give 100% to yourself and your family, I'm not I, I'm not competing either. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. worried about me. I'm, I don't care about what the fans say, what 
Well, nobody got to say it except for my people I love here got to say really. That inner circle, the people that's close to you, is the ones that should really matter when you're going through what your you? your your lows or your highs. Yeah. They matter, you know, everybody else is, is out there and they matter too, but not like you're in a circle. So mm -hmm. take care of yourself first. And um, so yeah, I'm, I'm good with her dropping out, yeah. sitting back. And she decided to come back and I don't know if I, is, is it, I think that part over it maybe, yeah. I, I'm not for sure, but yeah. if it is, then okay, she got, she she's still young. Yeah, and, and she can come back. I think it's a lot of people that ain't never did nothing and got a lot to say. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't never did nothing great, and even if you did do something great, so what? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, that don't matter. And some people just want to just be mean, just to be mean, just because they can. Yeah. Just want to be mean. They life is, is ain't 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 nothing. Mm -hmm. And so they they want somebody else to feel the same way they feel, depressed, unhappy. Yeah. Stressed about life, and some and a lot of times. Some of the stress is brought by brought on by you, mm -hmm. you know. So trying to do too much at the wrong time of your life and and not staying focused on what you need to focus on. Yeah. And and Jordan was like, I was listening to a Jordan documentary. And he was like, man, he was like, the game just got so I got irritated and frustrated with all the media. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like if the media wasn't there with all these people in your business 24/7, <laughs> these people' careers would probably go so much longer. Yeah. You know what I mean? I could imagine. I um, could imagine that. And I can only imagine the amount of stress from like sponsors and people just you know you got people around you 24/7 wanting you living off of you and your checkbook and what you provide. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So then you you gotta work, you gotta work, you gotta work. But it's like I'm I got enough to do what I need to do, but you trying to make me work so I can you can benefit off me. Yeah. And not not good. But this life is built like that. And and I would even this say world. Yeah. Even as contractors, it's like we got stress management too. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think that this is kinda of one of the first times I did it, but maybe a few months ago we had a meeting set up for somebody that couldn't only could only meet at seven thirty. And, you know, the way the week was going, I'm like, hey, I can't meet at 730 right now. I'll, you know, I take a day, stress management day, yeah. you know, so you don't get overwhelmed with all this stuff coming at you. Mm -hmm. You know, and I know you take some days off, too, sometimes. Yeah. You know, hey, I need some days here. So, you know, we, we hey, and that's the beauty of a business owner. Yeah. And pay attention to that, <laughs> to your partner. If your partner is having a rough time, rough day, don't, don't add no more pressure. Just say, okay, hey, we're here on that later today the next day next week because guess what it ain't that deep it's gonna it's, it's gonna, gonna work out yeah, it's gonna work out and if it don't it don't yeah it's not, <laughs> but even if it don't if things don't not working on your favor it still is because it's something you probably wasn't supposed to do at that moment right okay so don't look at it like you just missed out on something right and rushing to put bids in and all that oh they said yeah. they gotta yeah don't yeah You've been there done that don't let it get to you Facts. Don't let it get to you. Take your days, manage your stress, pay attention to yourself. Cause ain't, again, ain't nobody gonna pay attention to you unless you take care of yourself. So you demand what they say. Uh, you gotta command, you know, the respect that you deserve. Mm -hmm. And so ain't nobody gonna respect you unless you do. Just break your time, or ain't nobody gonna do it for you. So taking those days, taking that time to manage your stress, whatever you got going on, is so valuable. You know what I'm saying? That rest, 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 rest. So, and, and wrap up about Simone. I, I, I'm glad she did that. Me too. I'm gonna give her a round. We give her a round of applause because she did a good job of, of, of noticing her issue and and taking care of it. Like all the other people that, that's out here that has it, sometimes and recognizes it. Yeah. They take care of themselves. They step back and sit back and relax and regroup. Yeah. So she gets a round of applause for that. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, a setback for a major comeback. You know Absolutely. What I'm yeah. And then, you know, setback, just, just, just taking some time. Take that time. I ain't, hey, ain't nobody going to make me feel bad for taking some time for myself. I don't no. care what you say. Uh-uh. Um, so we're going to transition a little bit to that Ask Cliff segment. It's one of my favorite ones. Ask Cliff. Yep. Okay. Um, so... We get this question a lot, you know what right. I'm saying, from contractors, new contractors, and even I see in these Facebook groups, people are like, I ain't giving nobody half down. So, as a contractor, and even as a homeowner, but let's say as a contractor, mm -hmm. sh should I be getting some money down? Should I get half down? What should I be getting down on my jobs? Well, half down is, is a, a, 
is a uh, question that <laughs> is kind of controversial. Yeah. I'm about the half down part because well, what, homeowners, I mean, what? homeowners, anybody feel like uh, you might run for the money. Yeah. Um, but the contract on the contract's half, he figured uh, he might not get paid. Yeah. It's a, it's a, on time. So it's, it's both sides kind of a little stressful a little bit. Yeah. It's, it's um, what do you call it? There's risk on both sides. Yeah. And homeowners don't see that. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, as a contractor, I'm putting in all this labor. I'm buying materials with the hopes of getting paid that I don't know if money you have. Yeah. Yeah. So you taking a big risk, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This could be money that, you know, you feeding with your family. You got a family to feed. You got employees to pay. Yeah. This episode is brought to you by Triplog. If you're like most businesses, at the end of each year, you're scrambling to find deductions. Well, here's a solution that pays for itself many times over. Triplog provides accurate automatic mileage tracking for tax deductions and reimbursements for businesses. And you know at Cliff & Cliff, we're all about simplifying and amplifying. And this is one of those tools that helps us do that. And so, Triplog is a set it and forget it type of app for either iPhone or even Android. So it's compatible with most phones. And so what you do is, you set the app up at the beginning of the year with your work hours and your working days. So it's fully customizable to whatever days you work or whatever hours you work. And so what happens is you get in your car and it autom you got the phone with you and it automatically tracks all your mileage. So no longer you get rid of that pen and pad. Everything is done automatically. And at the end of the year, this app spits out a, um, a sheet with all your mileage on it calculated to give to your tax preparer or accountant and ultimately reduces your taxable income. And so like us, save that money. Go to triplog.com and during registration, use referral code Cliff and Cliff and get 20% off. That's right, get 20% off or click the link below to register and get 20% off. Let's get back to the show. Yeah. So you got to you got to value so you, the the so you have to decide on what's the minimum, the smallest job you can, the biggest job you can do without money down. Mm -hmm. So and that depends on your money flow. And at I would that point. and I would say. That's, you know, we, obviously we do jobs where we only get paid for work that's been completed. You know what I'm saying? Right. But if you're in, in an industry and you're working for, those are public entities we usually work for mm -hmm. from that perspective. But if you work for a private homeowner, mm -hmm. you got to get money down. Yeah. There's just no way around that. I, even on job $1,000, hey, I want 500 down. Yeah. And I say most, most definitely, yeah, especially if you're going to, it's gonna take you time to get that work done. Yeah. But people forget the more days in between the, the when you started to the finish, the more they forget mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah. about how hard you've been working in there, mm -hmm. and they think, oh, you got it done pretty fast. But you, you gotta think about when you're a contractor, you're not working by the hour. You working, you get it in, and you getting it done. Yeah. And if you get it in and get it done right, you want your money when you get done. Mm -hmm. And then you get some con some customers to say, oh, you didn't. You got that done in two days. I thought you were gonna be here longer than that. No, dang, is it worth it? Uh, what? How much I owe you? Yeah. <laughs> they like they just ask questions like that. So to keep your peace of mind, if a job is like I said, he said, if it's a thousand dollars, you want that five hundred, you want five hundred down. <laughs> I'm just curious. You know? have, have you ever have you ever had any issues with that or not taking down payment and nah, had an issue with it, like on the back end or something? I have, but I mean, it, it, it wasn't, um, I got paid, my, 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 my issue I had was getting the second, the, the, the second draw. <laughs> the second draw. Yeah. What, what was, why, why couldn't you get the second draw? Uh, this particular customer said they couldn't, they, they look, been looking for their checks and <laughs> these special checks and they can't find them. They, they said they had a, uh, uh, some kind of uh, investment, and they had to write a check to get the investment money out, and they couldn't find the checks. And, and what? Yeah, some craziness. It was, it was, I had never heard it before. Like, huh? What? I mean, I, I'm kind of like still new in the business yeah. at that point. Yeah. And I hate to say it was it was two women, an old a mother and daughter. Yeah. They'd done that, which is crazy. Like, women are sometimes some of the best customers. You know what I'm saying? And then sometimes they're like, women are probably older, single women. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or even just, I don't know. Women sometimes can be tough customers because they don't want to pay you that second draw. Or they'll spin you. Like one time, I was, my first job, one of our first jobs that we did together, uh -huh. that, you know, we had an issue. Well, the lady was like, yeah, I'll put a check in the mail for this second payment. 
And he was like, what? She told you what? <laughs> I'm looking at this check right now. So that taught me, you know what I'm saying? Like we said on completion, today I'm complete. So get paid that day when you complete. Ain't, right. don't put them, hey, don't put my check in the mail. No, that's some, that's some, some that they call that um, 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 juggling. Yeah. Juggling money to pay Paul when you old Peter. Yeah. Or whatever. But yeah, I would, I would definitely, um, more money down. Uh huh. And then I guess briefing your client too, like, hey, I'm gonna be finished this week. You know what I'm saying? So letting your briefing, like, don't come last day of work and say, oh, I need to get paid. It's you, you prepping your client for maybe even a couple of weeks. Like, yeah, we're gonna be wrapping up here, you know, in a couple of days. So, um, you know, we, you know, upon completion, I'm gonna be looking for payment around that time. You know, yeah. Are we gonna do a final walkthrough and then get paid? And 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 and, and then half down might be, um. Uh, uh, like done in, in three in three installments. You want you might want to draw in between it because the job is so big, so much money, and it's long. Yeah. So don't never say I'll take half down, and it's not enough to get you through what you got to get through. You get through, yeah, because you might be caught up and you're gonna need more money. Yeah. And that client gonna tell you, no, your contract says half down and rest in completion, so yeah. you get no more money. Yeah. So make sure you. Get it written out to where you can handle the, the side job you're doing mm -hmm. with the money that you got mm -hmm. on that first half, or either you break it up into draws. And I would say, if it's a small job, let's say under ten thousand dollars, do half. And then anything beyond that, if you're doing like a rehab or a remodel job, I would do it in progress payments, especially if you pull in permits. Mm -hmm. um, and just kind of give you an example, let's say you're doing a bathroom remodel or a big kitchen remodel, even a full home new addition. I would break it up into draws like based on your inspection. So if you got to get a uh, rough framing inspection, draw then. It, well, if I would get my initial draw, a draw on my framing, mm -hmm. a draw on once drywalls up after all your mechanicals are put in, mm -hmm. and then so what? That's four payments. You know what I'm saying? So you got the initial rough framing after drywall, and then your final payment. That's for yeah. a small job, I would say twenty, twenty thousand, somewhere around there. And you saying so small job is ten thousand dollars, but for ten thousand dollars might be a big job for you. Yeah, it could be. So if five thousand at the beginning and that job gonna take you out a whole month, mm -hmm. that half down might not be sufficient. Because <laughs> you gotta pay your guys about material, so make sure you understand that. Yeah. And maybe say, give me three, three like that, uh -huh. and then they owe you, I mean, or, or four, then ask for three, and they owe you three at the end. Yeah. So make sure you understand what you're doing when you when you set it up, because you don't want to be stressed out needing money, and you can't get no more. Yeah, that, and that brings me to two good points. The one, the first being is that um, when you're getting that draw, don't spend all your money. No. Don't, don't run, like, oh, I didn't got 5000 I need to pay my bills. I need to, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to Cancun. That is not money, yeah. And then I'm going to have enough money to finish this job because I'm going to take off to Cancun for a week, you know what I'm saying, yeah. for a few days, and then I'm going to get back and wrap this job on up. You mm -hmm. get back and be broke. Yeah, take care of your business. and Do what you say you're going to do first. And that's really, I know this we talking about a lot here, but that's really the best way to grow your business, man. Just say you can do something, you do it, and follow through on that. I tell you, that's the best way to grow a business, mm -hmm. man, mm -hmm. is to do what you say you're gonna do. Absolutely. So, yeah, make sure you understand what you're doing with that when you buy. So, yes, <laughs> spending that money. Have you ever yeah. spent your draw money? Like, oh man, I, I, was, I was never that 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 contractor to do that. I always made sure I took care of business. But you got something that did, did, did do that. Yeah, yeah, spending that draw money. Like, oh yeah, I got all this stuff I need to do. But take care of your responsibilities. Yeah. Then go play with once you get your profit. So the. To, so to your question, should you get a half down? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Get a half down because that is not saying that you're not a contract because you go in there and do it without any money down. Mm -hmm. I mean, protect yourself. Protect yourself. And then what you've taught me too, and even this business, which I didn't think about until you get into it, but all right, understanding how much a job is going to cost and what your profit is. And so if you can, you know, this is kind of a cheat code. So if you listen, this is a cheat code for running your business and getting that half down. So what you're going to do is figure out right, how much this job going to cost, total cost, and then what your profit is. Try to get that job all the way built. Like, so if the job is $10,000 and labor and material is 5000 for the whole job and you expect to make the other 5000 in profit, I would get 6000 down. 
So you can do the whole job, you know what I'm saying? And if mm -hmm. they don't pay you on that last draw, you've already been covered. So yeah. you're not really out. You just ain't got your profit yet. But, you know, through your contract language and following through, you've got a successful business. You're working with great clients. You're not going to have no issue with getting right. that second payment. But protect yourself. Like you said, make sure you understand what your profit is, what's going to cost you the job done, what materials and labor. Make sure you get that money so you cover. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, get that money. Get that money. Um, and so... So either half down or installments. Progress payments. Progress payments, depending on how long the project is. Milestones. Just take care of yourself mm -hmm. and, your, and, and your employees. Because you, if you, your employees don't want to hear, you ain't got my money. No. Your subs don't want to hear, you ain't got my money. No. And I don't, frankly, if I'm due to get paid, I don't want to hear you ain't got my money either. Right. So half down. Progress installments. Yep. And that's how you run a great business. Yeah. That's how you run a great business. People want to work for you. You pay on time. You know. Mm -hmm. and so customers, you know, they respect you more if you, you know what I mean? You got to be straightforward and have great conversations. Have a, The power of a conversation is heavy. Did we talk about that last week? Um, the power of a conversation? I don't think so. I have to rewatch. I have to go back maybe, and check. Maybe we'll see. <laughs> okay. So we're going to transition a little bit here. This episode is brought to you by Grasshopper. As a contractor, we struggle with answering the phone and separating personal life from work time. You know, we never shutting that phone off. All of our clients got our personal numbers. That's a bad situation. Well, here's a solution that gives you more credibility, privacy, and flexibility to do business anywhere. Grasshopper adds a business line and virtual phone system to your existing personal cell phone. So no longer do you have to have two cell phones, one for business, one for personal. Um, it's all on your phone now in the Grasshopper app. They have an app for iPhone and Android, so it's compatible with most phones. And as mentioned earlier, you can have a separate business line to make and receive calls. You can have calls go straight to voicemail during non-business hours. You can have your phone ring multiple people at once. So you know, whoever picks up first and gets to the call, so you never miss a call. You can sound larger and more credible with custom greetings and extensions. You can even send and receive texts to clients using your business line. Big game changer there. And one of my favorite features is that you can access the desktop and mobile app anywhere in the world, so you're never too far from your business. And so what I need you to do right now is click the Grasshopper link below in the description and to sign up for a seven-day trial. That's right, a free seven-day trial, risk-free. You have nothing to lose. What you waiting for? Move into our Simplify Amplify segment. All right. Okay. Um, we talking about presenting your bid. Mm. You like that? I like that. Yeah. Presenting your bid because that's big part huh. of the business. Big part of the business. Mm-hmm. How you present it and how you, and how you feel about it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because, well, I, I got a lot to say about this here. So okay. Kind of. What's your opinion on presenting a bid? How should I go about presenting my bid? Or what's the, how can, as a professional, a lot of people ain't went at work. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times it's about that last step, mm -hmm. presenting your bid. Really, it starts out way before that, mm -hmm. but presenting your bid is a big part of it. Yeah, I think presenting your bid is very important because, and, and it's the, the, I would say one of the important things is to make sure that you are confident in your bid. Yeah. Don't don't feel like you can't go in there to a customer's house and you're not for sure that your price is right. Yeah. Because they can read that. Yeah. On your in your body language, in your face, how you how you talking about it. Mm -hmm. I, I know when I my my first when I first got into business, I, I was I was writing up these contracts and I would go to the client client's house and I and I give them a number. I said, boy, this number. It's big. <laughs> <laughs> and to me, big with them was, was $5,000. That was big. Yeah. I'm like, whoo, what are they going to say about this here? Mm -hmm. uh, but remember, I'm in my young 20s, and I'm out here trying to start this business. And so $5,000, $7,000, that's a lot of pieces of ch some cheese. Yeah. You know, for me at that, at that point in time, so I went and said, hey, are they going to not give me a job because I'm too high? Um, yeah. and, uh, so you never know what your clients can afford. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. I wouldn't, and that's something I had to learn too, is that you can look and judge your client based on your prices or what you might pay for something. Right. Cause people like one thing I've learned in this business, people got money. 
Yeah. There's a lot of money out here. If they call you, they got the money to do it. They got the money to do it. They gonna find a way to get it done. And a lot of times they ain't really got a choice. Either they gonna pay it or not. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you the biggest thing that I had to overcome was that confidence. And it ain't gonna come on job one, it ain't gonna come on job two. It might mm -hmm. not even be three. But over time, you're gonna develop that confidence to present your bid and have faith and confidence that's like, for me, it's like, all right, I'm presenting this bid to you. Mm -hmm. This is how much it costs. And this, you know, got all my profit in there and everything. This is what I can do it for. I can't afford to do it for anything less. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, or are you going to be in the poor house? Mm -hmm. That's the last place you want to be as a contractor is working hard and be poor. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, I remember the first bid we went together. Yeah. And you and I, I said, well, you, you, you present the bid and talk to him. Yeah. And I remember you putting the putting the bid down the paper <laughs> <laughs> and then they you know, pushed up to the stem let them go through it. Yeah. And we hadn't really, and I and I should have prepped you better on it, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. I just want to see what was going to happen. Um, yeah. But I don't think we had extra copy for ourselves. I think we no. had just had the one copy. Yeah. And you gave it to them to read over. Yeah. And uh, then they passed it back, and uh, and so you was talking to them, but it, it didn't really go smoothly. We didn't get that job. No, we. I think we did. No, the one. Did we get part of, I think it was for a bathroom we was doing, it had to cut, they had to, had to about trying to build it out. Oh, uh, I don't know, probably remember that, not. Remember that job there? Oh, we probably didn't that, that was, We didn't get that one there because yeah. it was a lot going on in the in the bathroom. Yeah. And um, it was an older, it was an older couple. Yeah. Um, and well, maybe we probably didn't look like we was like on top of our job that, that day, I think. We didn't like we had anything all mapped out, well, in my opinion, on how it went. You know, I think that job was, I think went the complete opposite. Like we thought we did bad, mm -hmm. and they ended up calling us and saying we got the job. So I think we did actually. Did we get, get that, that job? We might we might have been so long ago. I remember, I remember was, the, the part I remember though, it was just, he had just gave them the bid. Yeah. And so part of presenting the bid is you want to have two. Yeah. You want your customer to have a copy, you have a copy, so you I can go through the Wait, question at the same time. Let's take a step back. Okay, mm -hmm. so I think presenting your bid, it mm -hmm. starts way before you even present the bid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. It, so like, okay, client calls you out, say, hey, I want to bid on this bathroom. Okay. You go out, you bid it, you know what I'm saying? Don't mm -hmm. go home either, start writing stuff up. Right. It starts way before that, you know what okay. I mean? You. Well, I ain't even, that's a bunch of prior. But let's say you do get to the final, I ain't going to get in there, that's a whole nother conversation. Exactly, yeah. But... All right, let's say you got the bid ready. Mm -hmm. What you gonna do? Well, you need to have, two, like I got saying, you want you want always have two copies. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying, all right, all right, I got the bid ready. You calling the client up, you wanna meet with them, you calling them on the oh. phone, you emailing this bid, what you doing? Well, you you, you call a customer and, and set up, setting up a time to meet back with them. So you wanna meet with present, them again? Yeah, yeah, and actually, when you when you there at the job, you, you would love to be professional enough to have, say, okay, I'm coming back on this day to present the bid. I already set that time and date yeah. up so you, before you leave. So you prepping them. you saying, hey, I'm going to have this bid done in two weeks. Um, can we meet back again at this same time right. next week? And I'm going to have the, the bid, and I want to we, we can talk about it. Absolutely. And this is when you, and I will say, this is a great tip. If you just, if you're hungry and you just starting out and you're trying to land these jobs, mm -hmm. that's what you got to do. Yeah, you want you want you want to do that now. It's kind of it's kind of tough for if you the, if you if you you the estimate writer, you the worker, you the job getter, you talk to the customer. You got all those hats. It's kind of hard to line that stuff up and make it all happen for you. But the be the better you are at lining it all up, the the more professional you look like you are to the customer um, at that point in time. So knowing what you want to do before you can go meet with the customer how things are going to line up mm -hmm. and to get back over there is 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 um some thoughts to have in front of you already planned pre-planned to do absolutely is there is to have that that rescheduled date to um meet again. talk to meet with them yeah and so like you said you said have two bids um one for the client you sitting down with them mm -hmm. hey can we you meet them at the house hey let's have a seat let's talk about this you know what i'm saying right and even if a client said hey no just email it to me you know what i mean mm -hmm. all right sometimes clients are like that right but if i'm hungry hungry i'm saying hey we don't that's a policy in our business we don't email bids if we come out here and spend 30 minutes an hour with you walking through a job mm -hmm. you know we expect for clients to um at least spend another 30 minutes with us so we can present yeah. this bid to you and talk to you about it you know, and that allows you a second time to get in front of that client 
you know what I'm saying? Right. To, to judge anything, if they have any aversion to your price or any other issues with your bid, y'all can talk about it at that point. And that may seem kind of bold to say that, but some, most clients gonna say, oh, you're a professional like that, were you okay? Yeah. All right, well, now at that point, you, you, you gotta be ready for the answer. Yeah. If you if you come like that, but some gonna respect that position and some gonna be kind of hard nosed and say no. Mm -hmm. I just want to email bid. What yeah. do you do? Yeah. And a lot of times, hey, if you have a good idea in your head of how much something costs, they say how much? Oh, I want this bathroom model. You know what I mean? And before you even leave that day, this is a good tip too. Before you leave that day, if you have a good idea what you want to charge for a job, you done did this before. You have a good idea where you want to bid on a job. Say okay, well. Um, right now, before you even get to the bidding stage, I'm thinking, you know, this job's gonna cost me, cost you somewhere between 10 to 20,000. Mm -hmm. And the client says, oh, that's too much. You just saved yourself three hours in writing a bid. Yeah. Or however long it takes you, you probably done saved yourself a whole day of trucking back out there, doing all this mumbo jumbo to get mm -hmm. back out there. And, uh, they can't even afford the price that you was potentially about to give. Yeah. Yeah. So as you, so as you hear, the different ways of putting a bid, uh, you can present a verbal bid right there on the spot, yep. a paper bid, um, and then the other thing about presenting a bid is is is, is being being confident whether you're doing a verbal bid or one on paper. Mm -hmm. It's being confident in what you're saying because they're gonna ask you questions, mm -hmm. and you gotta know if you know what you know, then the questions they're gonna ask you are gonna come out smooth. Yeah. And, and 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 confident, mm -hmm. but if you do not know those answers, you might be in trouble. Cause them clients, some of them clients have been prepped yeah. for you. They ready for you to come. Yeah, and they got questions for you that they friends have told you them to ask you, or they are either they didn't been through the process before. So present your bid verbally or on paper with confidence. Have confidence in your number that you give them, and be ready to act, to answer questions. Yep. Um, so absolutely, uh, present your bid with confidence. And if you don't know the answer to something, tell them you get back with them. They can respect that. That's so right. I'll yeah, get back yeah. with you. So don't be afraid to say, I'm going to get back with you. But it looks like we're wrapping up on our time here. Okay. Okay. Dwight Cliff Jr. here. Dwight Cliff Sr. Um, we are Cliff, Cliff and Cliff. Cliff. So we out. Peace. Peace.